please welcome back to the show the one and only Emerald. Thank you. Happy Thank you. birthday. And uh, how, what are you doing to celebrate tonight? Well, uh, we've got to watch a debate yes. for sure. Um, so you, I, I think we're going to lay cooking? low. The kids are going to cook. Oh, they are. They're going to cook. And mom, so we'll see what happens. Uh, and uh, how old are the kids? Five and three and a half. Now, the five. <laughs> Oh, EJ, the five-year-old, is really—he's no, he's he really is cooking. Good. He yeah. really is. So, what, what does he like to make? Pasta? I don't know what he's going to make tonight. Maybe it, he'll make what you're making today. We made roasted uh, branzino last night. Oh, uh, at with, home. At home. Oh, how great! With some roasted uh, vegetables and uh, some little bit of pinto beans. It was great. And he's a big helper and oh, gets nice. right in there. And so um, now, now that you've kind of moved to New York full time, uh, but you're traveling still so much, yes. right? Yes. But the kids are in school here yes, in they New are. York, enjoying um, it. And they do like it. They love it. Oh, good. I'm so they love glad. It. Um, where are you shopping? I'm shopping, uh, well, I'm shopping at Whole Food. I'm shopping at the local farmer's market. Are and, we, aren't and we lucky? And I really, really encourage people to do that. I mean, it makes so much sense, right? Not only the seasonal yeah. aspect of it, the pricing aspect of it, right. the whole carbon footprint of it, right? I mean, packaging, et cetera, et cetera. I really encourage you to, to, to support those farmers that are out there. Right. And the product is just unbelievable. It really and that's is. what I like about Whole Foods, too, because they are supporting the uh, the real uh, They have small a local farmer. campaign. They do. Exactly. Yeah. They have a local campaign regionally where they're bringing in these local products. Right. And where I'm doing my new show, uh, Emerald Green, they're in Virginia. This whole area of Virginia is just loaded with all of these farmers. So yeah. it's incredible the amount of products that you see on a weekly basis. Well, I, can't, I love to go down to Union Square and, oh, and it's shop. Oh, the best. And uh, today, today my... Uh, my driver's down there shopping for me, it. getting me all different kinds of apples because I'm going to have a, a dinner on Saturday night. I have to find out which apple is going to bake the best. I love it. No, I'm not going to give away. There are a lot of them out, out there. You know, I took, take the oh, kids yeah. on Saturday. Oh, yeah. It's a fun thing to do, and we pick things for a few days. Emerald's going to make something delicious for us today. And I thought, I thought when you suggested making a risotto and giving people the 101 risotto recipe, yes. uh, that is... Uh, something that is both economical to make because uh, it is a one-dish supper. Yep. And this is great for a Sunday supper, for a Saturday supper. And it's so versatile. It Martha. is. You know, and I mean, because we're going to do duck and pumpkin yep. and celebrate the fall and what's coming up. But roasted vegetables, mushrooms, shellfish, you so can start, really start, you can start, go. Start. All right, I have some uh, quality olive oil, extra virgin, okay. and a little bit of the duck uh, drippings that I had. Okay, so like one tablespoon, and you roasted a duck, a whole duck. Roasted a duck, and uh, I, I sort of pricked the duck, salt and pepper it, let it air dry for about 30 minutes, 500 degrees for about 40 minutes, turn the temperature down to about 350, then let it finish for about another 30 minutes, let it cool, take the duck away. One other tip that I want to tell you, go ahead, please start. Yeah. I like to always start with the a onion quarter first. quarter cup of onion. Yes. Now let's okay. turn this up a little bit. And I like to to start with the onion to get a little flavor of that first. And then the next uh, ingredient that I like to do is then, once that goes for about a minute, is to add the actual arborio rice. It's a very, very special rice from Italy. The yeah. rice is from all over the world, but this is a really, It really... has to be arborio. To make a real risotto, you have to have that sort of a medium grain yes. that the outside gets kind of creamy. It gets creamy, and it gets very, very nutty, and, and it just sort of gets breaks and the, down. And the center stays and the center firm. And al dente yeah. a little bit. Right. And it's about, you know, the perfect risotto, folks, this is really simple to do. The perfect risotto is really about 18 minutes. And to stir... I'm glad you say that, because my risotto takes exactly 18, 18 minutes. 18 minutes, yes. And I like making it when guests arrive. How many arrive. times have you... I, I it's mean, have been cooked minutes, it. It's right. 18 minutes. <laughs> 20, uh, it's just a little bit too Overdone. far. 16, mm, just a little bit too well, we don't have We don't have 18 minutes, so we have to keep going. All right, let's go. All okay. right, so now that so that... So now it gets a little opaque, the rice, when you saute it. And, so the, and the oil and the duck drippings right. have coated the rice. So now we're going to flavor it with a little bit of garlic... So have like, a, a, like, like a clove? tablespoon, one clove oh, of garlic. Oh, the stock okay. so good. Now, is, let me tell you the is tip. Is that your homemade sauce? Yes. Oh. So what we did is we used, actually, a, a chicken broth, and we took the duck bones mm. when we took the meat oh. and fortified the chicken broth for a little bit to get a little bit of that So you're not wasting there. any part of that roasted duck, right? Exactly. Okay. Now, about two cups of cooked pumpkin. Here's, here's where it comes, folks. You can use acorn squash. You can use butternut squash. But right now, the pumpkins are so... If you I look like around how you Martha's, say squash. 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 <laughs> Pumpkin squash. How do you say it? 
Squash. Squash. Okay. <laughs> squash. Squash. Anyway, it's so good. Look at that. It's so beautiful. Duck and, and the, squash risotto. So, so you cooked it. You cooked it uh, in a pan with a little bit of water and, and, and oil. And, and roasted it. Oh, it's so good. Yes. Yeah. And it gets, you, know, you don't want to cook it too much. Okay. A little bit of salt. Okay. And a little fresh ground pepper. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. Now the whole trick comes with the stock, okay. folks. And you want to bring your stock up, especially if you're making homemade stock and you're freezing it. You always want to bring it up to a boil before you start whatever you're going to make with it. To make sure that it oh, hasn't that? spoiled. That's phenomenal. Okay, that sizzle gonna, is what you want, right? We're going to start with two ladles okay. full. And then the whole thing is now is stirring this, as Martha said, 18 minutes. And don't as, go don't go answer the door and talk no, to the UPS don't answer, man. And the phone. Yeah, don't no. answer the phone right now. No. Or else if you have one close to your close to your stove, it's okay. Right. No. Okay. As this begins to evaporate and it concentrates in flavor, what's going to happen is that the risotto, the rice, the grains of the rice are starting to uh, just sort of meld in there okay. and the outside is getting tender. Okay, so we have one that's already absorbed the liquid. Okay, now we you, need... And you just keep adding liquid, right? Yes. And okay. so as it evaporates, as you can see, now you add another uh, maybe a half cup at a time, continue to stir, and you want to do that right to 18 minutes. And at 18 minutes... I have the perfect way to finish my risotto. How? Well, we, have, we have I'm, a pot over there that you, you can finish. You want to finish? Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, my gosh. Look Let's how good. Let's get just a little bit more stock. Stock. Okay. You want to make sure if it's going to stick, it's going to stick in the middle. So, so you want to stir. In the middle. Right. Yeah. See how, right? You loosen yeah. that up. Right. Now, let's add mm. the duck meat. Oh, this looks so good. So I've never had duck risotto. Two. Ever cups of duck meat. Okay. We're going to just sort of fold that in. Now that could be chicken meat too. It could be chicken. It could be turkey. You're right. It could be just vegetables. That's good for the leftover turkey. Oh yes indeed. Yeah. All right. Now my secret is this. Basil at the end. Okay. Butter. Butter. Now. Now. Okay. Cream. One tablespoon of butter. Optional. Cream is optional. But so important. But so important. <laughs> You know, these so, days it's like cream, butter, <laughs> optional, but so important. Don't leave it out. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's an good. extra 20 minutes on the... On the treadmill. That's right. Yeah, forget it, you know. <laughs> Half a... Ten, now, the, what is it? Now, once the cream and once the butter incorporates in there, the very last thing, folks, is the cheese. Okay. Finely grated and Parmesan Reggiano. The best. Oh, yeah. And then a little bit of fresh basil oh. right at the end. Okay. Now that's a whole dinner, everybody, with a salad. Yes, indeed. That is it. We're going to finish yes. making our risotto when we return, so stay with us. Yeah. We're back with Emerald, and we're almost done preparing this very fabulous risotto, duck and pumpkin risotto. And the garnish is going to be... This, this time of the year, I have memories of my mom making pumpkin seeds. After we would carve the pumpkins or use the pumpkin... You bet. We would, uh, you know, rinse all of the flesh that's left over, and then you just sort of equally just a nice amount of olive oil, and then I use a little bit of my spice... This just, spice is so tasty. So where do we buy Emerald's Essence? Just about anywhere, really. Yeah. And they can visit, visit our websites as well. So we want to roast these 300, 325 degrees until they get nice and crispy. And they are delicious. And they are delicious as a snack. They're really great. Now, to finish the risotto, here's what we're going to do. Make three plates, one for Charles Koppelman. Yes. He's standing over there. Where's Charles? I'm Charles. here, right here. <laughs> Looking forward no. to it. <laughs> Charles is our um, chairman of Martha Stewart Living and of Emerald, right? That's right. Your boss. That's right. <gasps> that looks so now, good. What I like to do, do you eat your risotto from the outside in? I do. I do too. Yep. And Because and it stays hotter in the center. That's exactly right, Martha. Yes. And see, you just have to see, it oozes a little bit around the plate there. Very important to see that little bit of oozy. That means that it is moist enough. If it's dry and every individual grain of rice is there, that's Chinese. <laughs> we don't want that, right? That's exactly right. Chinese rice, individual grains, risotto, <laughs> all together, creamy, and I'm eating Charles's. Uh oh. No, I got Charles. I'm I'm fixing mm. Charles right here. A mm. little pumpkin seed, and a little bit of uh, fresh chives. Mm. Uh, I like the little oniness. So where's Charles? Here, Charles. This is really good. 
And I know it's more like this breakfast time right now, but this is so good. good Th this is a birthday risotto on top wow. of that. Come here, Charles. Come on over here. Don't You don't have to stand over there by yourself. Wow. <laughs> Paul, risotto is a communal dish, too. It is. Mm. Mm. This is outrageous. Isn't it good? Holy really, smokes. Really, really. Now, Charles, you've been friends with Emerald for a long, long time, right? Uh, almost 20 years. Uh, and you're, and Charles's grandchildren all love Emerald. You took them to his show all the That's time. That's how we, we kept them. our relationship. Absolutely. As each one got to be about five years mm. old, they would say, Pop, Pop, you know Emerald? Can I go to the show? Yeah. <laughs> so now, over the years, I've got seven of those guys. Now, we have so a over little the years. surprise for you, Emerald. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. We couldn't let your birthday go by without baking you a cake. Okay? Now, this is not exactly a baked cake, though. That's just a euphemism, a baked cake. So, Nikki, bring it out. Oh, Happy wow. <laughs> wow. Now, Emerald, come here. <laughs> Emerald loves golf, and I don't know when you find time to play golf, and Charles <laughs> loves golf, but this is Emerald. I'm taking up golf because of you, I Emerald. Love it. Okay? <laughs> That's me. Charles is over here, and... This is a Rice Krispie treat. Oh, wow, that and, is great. And it's, it's, it looks real, oh, perfect. Did you make a wish? I did. You did, good. And look, those are your golf clubs. <laughs> There's the golf ball, and I'm just gonna make sure that that golf ball goes right where it's supposed to go. <laughs> Emerald just hit a hole in one. <laughs> Lucinda Quinn knows what's comforting in the cool weather. And she says it's nothing more than a bowl of hearty soup. Her kids love this soup. Lucinda is our TV food editor here, and she's going to share with us one of her family's favorite dinners, a one-pot meal of pumpkin soup. Yes. Now, the kids really like pumpkin soup. Oh, they love it. And they like the short ribs. Yeah, That's what you they can, like. <laughs> when I use the short ribs, it makes it a full meal in a pot. And today, the best pumpkin that we could find is this Jaradale. It's an heirloom Australian pumpkin has a green skin and it has these big seeds and a wonderful orange flesh. So like one inch cubes. Yeah, make sure that you really get all of the skin off, the green off, and also the fiber here because ultimately this is going to be mashed into a golden broth. Oh, it so is? We, yeah. Oh, oh. So we have two pounds of pumpkin and I put three pounds of short ribs in this pot. This is a Jamaican recipe. And, oh. um, and, you know, it sounded like a Jamaican Yeah, it's recipe. very rustic. It's one of my favorite soups in the world. The kids will eat it because I put these little dumplings called spinners in it. Oh. And we'll make those, and I'll show you. Those are terrific dumplings. Because the Jamaicans take their dumplings very seriously. Can you get me 10 cups of water, Martha? I we're can. just going to cover this, and we're going to put this on to boil. And, you know, again, I use different pumpkins depending on what's good. So we're putting this on high, and what we're going to do is bring this to a boil and then simmer it for about an hour and a half. So we'll let this come up to a boil, and meanwhile, what I would do is come over. I'm going to make the spinners I told you okay. about. This is a cup and a quarter of flour, and this is just about a teaspoon of salt, and then about a half a cup of water. And this is just so simple. I'm just mixing it up here. And then very quickly, I just kind of go around like this. No big deal. And then I get my hands right in there. And, uh, and then I just start pushing it around. So all the flowers absorb. So then I'll just stick this right over onto here. Get this going a little bit. So and you made three different batches of soup today. Yeah, which is great because then we'll all be able to taste. And if I'm lucky, I won't have to cook dinner at home tonight. Now, what I want you to do, Martha, and this is a white mm. yam. It's a Spanish yam. So I cut into what? First cut the face off. Let's just get rid of that. And then we want about a half a pound. And you have to work fast because... Yeah, it discolors. Yeah, it discolors. And dries. So this is almost ready right here. So like one inch pieces? Mm, yeah, I, not too big. Okay. We have a pot here that has been cooking. It's cooked for an hour and a half. I've removed the short ribs. And now what I have is... Just the pumpkin pieces. See these chunks right here like this? Oh, yes, lovely. So what I do is I just take it like this and just mash it. We're going to need a couple slices of hot pepper to put in oh, here. The um, Actually, habanero? One, yeah, right here is we're going to put a whole green one in, okay. which is not very spicy, and we just want two slices of that. You can get that ready over there with the yam. 
These scotch bonnet peppers have such wonderful flavor, and mm. people just think they're hot. But if you can get oh, they have the flavor. taste out of them. Oh, I love them. So see, I'm just mashing mm -hmm. like this. It's so rustic. I like to have some of the pieces, but I want the, the broth to be that beautiful golden color. Mm. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you can go ahead and uh, stick those yams right in there. Okay. What about the slices? Stick those in. And we took the meat off the short ribs. You can stick that in there. We're going to slowly bring it up to temperature, and now I'm going to season it. We've got three scallion, then all I did was just clean it and smash it. And mm. we're going to stick it right in here, just oh, okay. like that. We have three cloves of garlic. We need to get it going, because then we're going to just stick that in there. I need a good spring of fresh thyme. We didn't put this guy in. Yeah, put that guy in. That's the whole one. Now mm -hmm. we're going to watch that, because at the end we're going to take it out. Yep. Anyway, I'm just sticking this straight in, right, like that. And... Um, this is optional, but I love to have some carrots. Put the carrots in, and good, good sprinkling of salt. About a teaspoon and a half. I'm gonna keep tasting it for salt, and then about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Mm, it's, it and looks now, really good. And you'll see why these are called spinners, because... They spin around? No. You take them and you spin them right off your oh, hand okay. like this. And as you drop them in there, you kind of turn it over so that it cooks without sticking. And I like them sort of their manageable size, but the kids like big, huge ones. Every once in a while, I take my spoon and just turn it over like this. And you know what? This is about it. Then we're going to cook this for about mm. another 20 minutes. Now, what I do here is I start looking and seeing how much yam do I have, how many dumplings do I have, because I want to have enough broth. So I'd say a few more. Spinners. A few more. This is all done. We made this earlier. How good I'm going to pick works. out the, the thyme and the scallion because I just want to get all the flavor out of them. Now, here's now the pepper. Oh, yeah, take that out. Now, this would also be something that my husband and oldest son would probably argue over, this pepper. And I don't know. What do you think? You think we should take the red peppers out, too? No. I, okay, good. What I would do here is just taste for a little salt. So what do you do with the leftover oh, spinner dough? Well, I leave that, and then in the morning I make Johnny cakes out I'll of it. Save that for your I'll Johnny cakes. I'll save that. Cakes. I'll take that home. Here's your top. I have we'll to taste this. Put the timer this. on for another 20 minutes. Mm. All right. There's one of those little spinners. I have to see. Those have a nice. They should have a little bit of a chewy texture. Mm. Are they good? I don't know if I made enough in this pot. You didn't. You skimped. I skimped, and look, I made little tiny ones because I thought you'd like the little ones. No. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm you know. Just like your children. <laughs> well, and there you have it. It is a beautiful soup, and I must tell you, it's really, really delicious. Maybe I should take the big dumplings home. Oh, no. no okay. that's <laughs> I'm just measuring three and a quarter cups of flour for a really delicious, delicately spiced pumpkin bread that I think you will enjoy very much. It's the perfect example of what's known as quick breads. No fussy yeast, no kneading required, and it's delicious straight out of the oven, but it's even better the next day after the flavors of the spices have had a chance to develop. So three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and one of my favorite spices, allspice, quarter of a teaspoon. Three teaspoons of baking powder. Make sure your baking powder is fresh. And now a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. And it's about half of a nutmeg. There. So I'm whisking with a wire whisk. And these are our dry ingredients ready to incorporate into our wet ingredients, which I'll make right now. So one can, this is a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Now we've been using this in all our pumpkin recipes. And by the way, here's a surprising fact about canned pumpkin puree. Most manufacturers make it from one or more kinds of squash which can be less stringy and richer in sweetness and color than most pumpkins. And one cup of dark brown sugar. Cream the brown sugar and the pumpkin and one cup of granulated sugar also. Four large eggs. And we've 
change the typical quick bread recipe uh, to make it, I think, even more palatable and delicious by substituting melted butter, 12 tablespoons of melted butter, for an equal amount of vegetable uh, oil or shortening. I really prefer the taste of butter and I'd rather use a good creamery butter than oil in my bread. So just let this get nicely incorporated. And now you can add your butter. And then you can start spooning in your dry ingredients, alternating with a half a cup of buttermilk. It smells really, really delicious. And a little bit more of the dry ingredients. So these are, these cake pans are buttered six by three. They're really little miniature bread pans. And you can also make two larger loaves, eight and a half by four and a half. But these little ones are perfect for gifting. And the easiest way I find to make sure that each pan gets an equal amount is to spoon equal amounts one by one into each pan. You can also do as the professionals do and weigh the pans. And it's very handy to have a good scale in your kitchen and work with it that way. I think it's a very good idea. Then you'll get even sized loaves and most professional bakers do use scales because it's hard to divide into four equal <laughs> portions. Yes, this has a very rich orangey color. So transfer this to a 350 degree oven, 40 to 45 minutes. So this quick bread really does slice very nicely. And since the ends are not as desirable as the center, I'll just cut one off and give it a taste. Mmm, it's really, really good. It's so delicious that you'll be craving it all year long. Enjoy. So I'm gonna quarter this to make it um, cook a little bit faster. Yeah. And then we're gonna season the inside. Okay, just salt and pepper? Just salt and pepper. We're gonna put some butter and sage in it as well. Mm. So you could just eat that right out of the oven if you're, Absolutely. If you're starving, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. um, you, can, you can cook pumpkin, they're great for sides. Um, so a lot of times we have a salad in the actually the pumpkin where um, we caramelize the, um, the pumpkin in slices uh, with brown butter and, uh, and sage and a little bit of honey. And then... Um, so just, a, just about three tablespoons of butter? Absolutely. Okay. And then I'll put a little oh, sage, sage leaf in each one. yes. Sage and pumpkin go very well together. Absolutely. I think, I think uh, sage is one of my favorite, favorite herbs, but I like it very cooked. I don't like it raw. So what temperature? For, we're going to cover it with foil, oh, okay. and then um, we're going to bake it in 400 degrees. Okay. For so about just a little piece of parchment, yeah. Because we don't like the aluminum touching our food. Do Absolutely you? not. No, okay. it, it does come off. Okay. Good. So we'll just cover that, and it steams and roasts at the yeah, same time. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Well, so, the thing is, is if you if you left it uncovered, it would be good for certain applications. Oh, it would dry out a lot. It would dry out too yeah. much for for making that yeah. a puree or okay. Or, so or filling. right into the oven for uh, one about about an hour. An hour. Okay. Yeah. So here we have the cooked. Yes, this is such this is so magical. This doesn't happen oh, at work is. usually. It takes an hour for us to get to this point. <laughs> you know. Everything here is like magic. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll I'll scrape while you yeah, put okay. the other ingredients so in. So let's um, let's get rid of the sage leaf. Oh yes, I will. Um, and just and scrape. Just scrape in uh, in, in right into the bowl. Yeah, right into the bowl. Okay. So you're gonna mash that up. I'm gonna mash it up a little bit so that there's not uh, big chunks. Put the Parmesan in. So we're making, what do you call this pasta? This is a capolacci, which okay. um, translates as Pope's hat. A little Pope's hat. One tablespoon? One tablespoon right up here. Oh, hold on one second though. We have to brush it real quick. Okay. With a little bit of water. This is kind of like, acts like a paper mache type product. So make Okay, one tablespoon where, right here? Uh, that's fine, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And you All need right, a so tablespoon? That's actually, that's actually perfect. Okay. Um, so we're gonna fold this over. Like that. Yes. And then we're gonna get this little dude right here. Oh, so we should have cut it with that. Because it makes it decorative, doesn't it? It does, but um, we do this at this anyway. point anyway. Oh. This it is helps. time it also intensive. Helps. It is a little bit time intensive. Okay. And then I'll just show you like this. Oh, boy. This. Boom, 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 boom. And then 
turn it over. And then fold it over like that. How nice. I'm gonna drop some in the water right now. So you wanna season the water with salt when you cook your pasta. How much salt? A lot of salt? Well, um, you wanna put enough salt in there to where the water starts to go, um, stop boiling, and then let it come back up again. These are so pretty. How many minutes? Yeah. Uh, about three minutes for these three guys. Minutes. Gabe is just finishing up this beautiful, beautiful pumpkin capolacci with sage butter that's been browned, added a little bit of pasta water, and yum. Yeah. Uh, the pasta water helps stop the browning process of the butter and emulsify the sauce. Mm -hmm. And boy, does that look good. And tender, so tender and beautiful. Now, do you serve any uh, cheese with that? I do. I serve pecorino with it. Oh, okay. Welcome back. We're making some Southern-inspired side dishes with cookbook author Virginia Willis. And since pumpkin, uh, since it's pumpkin week, we're starting with a spiced pumpkin mash. Exactly. Which is so good. So easy way to cook pumpkin rather than steaming it and getting it all wet mm -hmm. uh, is to roast it. To roast it, it yeah. exactly. And you could even use some of the squash from the first segment. Oh gosh, that Those one. Those are beautiful. Oh my gosh, so tasty. So, so this is just a, like a little sugar pumpkin. A little sugar pumpkin, exactly. Okay. So one of the things about the book is the concept is basic to brilliant. So it's 150 refined southern recipes and ways to dress them up for company. So we're going to roast the um, roast the pumpkin and season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. But you have to cut it up and you have to take, take out the all the seeds. So okay. one of the things that I like to do is to save the seeds to spice them. Oh yeah. To use it like as a garnish. How do you do that? Uh, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and sometimes rosemary in or the thyme oven. in the oven, exactly. And okay. uh, I would use that for the brilliant to, to top our mash. Okay. So, so just, just clean the, it. And what temperature? 350 for about 45 minutes, just okay. until it's tender to the point of a knife. Okay. And and then once it's cooked... See how soft and nice it is? Oh, yes. That's yeah. a very nice way to do it. So I will take some of this pumpkin. So by cutting it up, uh, what do you... By, instead of just putting it a half of a pumpkin down, I, I oftentimes just do have, have it. Right? Yeah, and just cook it like no, that. No, that would work. Sure. Yeah. And so... Uh, and you're going to mash that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to mash that. So I'm taking the flesh and putting it in here. And it smells so good. Oh, it does. Wow. All and right. pumpkin really does have a, a lot of nutrients. Yes, good mm. and good for you. Yes. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're making a spiced mash. So I'm going to put in some different things. I have um, orange zest, which tastes delicious with the pumpkin, and cinnamon. So kids are really going to like this, and this is going to taste delicious. May I ask you to um, grate your nutmeg for me? Of course, my favorite thing. <laughs> After a manicure, it's just the best. <laughs> I'll do it if you'd like. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just don't get your nails in the way. All spice. Just a pinch of cayenne. Not too much. Just enough to get a little heat. Salt. Pepper. Orange juice. Did mm -hmm. you mash for me? I'll pour. Okay. There you go. And this is the old-fashioned potato masher. Exactly. I have so many of these. But it's the only way to get really good pit mash. You know, if you put this into the, um, the, into the uh, food processor, you get sort of a mush. Well, I like it where there's a little bit of texture. Yeah. So I'm going to add a little bit of molasses. That's going to give it some sweetness. And okay, some I like that. Depth. And then just a little bit of butter. Just a little? Just a little. Okay. People have this misperception that southern food is always unhealthy, and it's not. It doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't be. have to be. But, but see, kids are going to love that. Really? Really. <laughs> no, the children I know, they, they eat everything. Yes. Well, I think it's important to introduce different foods to kids as they, um, yeah. you know. So, okay, so that's a nice... Nice, dark pumpkin mash. Right. So okay. if you want to put that in this bowl, I'll get started okay. on our Brussels sprouts. Okay. That might sound good. Yep. So here I have in my skillet, I have some bacon that's cooking. And I'm going to add some onion. So right into the bacon and bacon fat. Exactly. Okay. And if you wanted, I, I have just a little bit of bacon in here. You could use canola oil or an olive oil. So bacon and onion and then apples. Oh, apples. So these are, the, these are Brussels sprouts that kids are really going to like. So you have apples um, sitting in uh, acidulated water? Right. That's a great cooking tip. To, if you hold the apples in acidulated water, which is nothing that, of course, you know this, lemon water, then it'll prevent the apples from turning brown. Right. There you go. All right. 
You want to help me out with seasoned salt and pepper for me? Okay. Salt, pepper. Mm. So this is the basic version of using the sprouts like this. So I have the sprouts that we just simply have. And then the brilliant version of this recipe is to peel the sprouts off so it's just the leaves. Yum. All right, so I'm going to add these. We blanch them first so they become tender. And the Brussels sprouts, these are going to cook until they're tender, which is going to take about five minutes. Look how pretty. Minutes. Oh, Isn't that so gorgeous? pretty, yes. So five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're not going to have time for five minutes. No, but we can uh, just see. And then what are you putting on? Some thyme? Thyme. Mm -hmm. And you want to add the parsley for me, please? And some parsley. Isn't that beautiful? I always loved mm. Brussels sprouts oh, as a child. Oh, I, I love them. Just tell the children they're little cabbages. They are little cabbages. And as long as it's little this or little <laughs> that, they eat it. They look at it and they see that they're really little tiny mm -hmm. cabbages and yeah. they'll... And the sweetness of the apples, uh, the sweetness of the apples and the crunch of the yeah. bacon make it really nice. So this is a very helpful meal. Very nice. Very autumnal, nice, seasonal. I mean, I think the thing about um, with Southern food is that we always had a garden and ate from the garden. So it's like, that's what helps My Brussels kids. sprouts are just ready to pick. They're beautiful. Yeah, they they're are. They're so beautiful. They're so nice. Thank you. So here we have mash. We mm -hmm. have chicken fingers. Right, and then we'll put, you want to put the Brussels sprouts on here. Well, I don't know if they're done. Well, we think? don't have to. No, we don't have to. They have to cook exactly right. So I'll have a, I'll have a chicken finger and some mash. All right. So this is a spice mash with the orange zest and orange juice. And chicken finger for you. Ruby's chicken fingers. Yes. There you go. Excellent. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, Bon appetit, y'all. So, <laughs> you all. And uh, it is delicious. And maybe you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to bring some of Virginia's Southern favorites into your own kitchen because everyone in the audience is taking home her beautiful book, Basics to Brilliant. You all. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We're continuing our Hot Chef series with chefs from some of my favorite cities. And today's chef is the executive chef at three top San Francisco area restaurants. He's here today to share one of his most delicious recipes for a wonderful soup that would be a great addition to any Thanksgiving table. Please welcome David Bazargan. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. It's great. It's Thank you. So today, soup, pumpkin soup. And it looks, uh, from what I saw in the kitchen, really good. Now, you're from San Francisco. You saw the little tape we just did. Yes. Uh, what would you add to my favorite places? I would add um, a place called Swan Oyster Deep which is a family-run business and it's um, a small place where they open around 7 in the morning and they get in all this beautiful fish, mm. uh, oysters, crab, you get anywhere, anything from oysters on the half shell to crab Dungeon bluey, Dungeonous, Dungeonous crab, crab fresh favorite. picks. And when, when they run out of food, they close. So it's your guaranteed freshness every day. Oh, it's I just want to a, go it's there. A really great what your there. restaurant is doing oh, yeah. very well. Really well. well. Baraka. Yes. Uh, how do you say that? Baraka? Baraka. Yes, which and, means uh, the essence of life in Arabic. Mm, fantastic. So, so I can't, can't wait to try which it. Which we, we serve this, we do a soup du jour every day, but right now, so a little sugar pumpkins pumpkin. being in season. Yes, really nice pumpkins, okay. really sweet. First thing you want to do is cut the pumpkins in half. And there's an easy technique for this, so to just cut right into the end and just sort of roll the roll the pumpkin oh. like that, just in half. And then just break it. Yep, just break it in half. Oops. Not that one. <laughs> almost, almost. A little tough. And use a big but, knife. There it goes. Don't use yeah, a little knife. Yeah, you want to make sure you have a nice yeah. sharp knife. And, uh... and next thing we'll do is just scoop out the seeds. Now, I've been doing this to so many pumpkins lately yep, and squash exactly. because uh, yep. I had a bumper crop in my garden this year. <laughs> many different varieties. Yep. Uh, you might have seen them all on the show. And uh, I've taken all the seeds out, dried them, and saved them for next year because I really want to grow. I want to grow the warty ones, you know, all those bumpy skin <laughs> yeah, ones. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Some of them have such wonderful Most flesh. Most of those have, yeah, really nice flavor. It's really nice. So from so, here, we'll just uh, on some half sheet trays here. And you buttered sheets. everything. These are lightly buttered. Okay. And then we'll take a little bit of water. And just drizzle it on here. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Sprinkle the uh, pumpkins with a little uh, salt. Okay, I don't, and, think uh, these, I don't think these have been... Have these nope. been sprinkled? No, no you can I'll do that, do that. One. Yeah. And they go in what temperature oven? Uh, 375. 375 degrees. And uh, they'll go yeah. flesh side down. Yeah. Cut side? Just like Cut that, side. yep. Cut side down. And... 
Okay. And when they come out, well, we can leave them here. Okay. When they go, come out there, how they're long? They're nice and tender. About it takes about long? 45 minutes mm. until it's uh, really soft. And what we'll do is scrape the flesh out. Once they're cool, you want to wait till they cool. It's a lot easier to handle. And just scrape it into the bowl here. So this is one of how many different soups that you serve at, at Garaka? Uh, we serve up to four or five a week. We like to change it frequently because we have a lot of regulars. So mm -hmm. it's nice to, nice to change it up. And then this, do you have to puree it or anything now or just cook it? Next thing we'll do is add, what we have here is about a cup of onions, which have <clears throat> been slowly cooked in a little butter for about eight to 10 minutes until they become soft. And to this, we're gonna add a little bit of minced garlic. So like two cloves? Yeah, about two cloves. And then about a teaspoon of yellow curry powder. Um, I recommend madras, which is a particular variety. Mm -hmm. Add that right in, and about a quarter teaspoon of freshly so grated nutmeg. So is the nutmeg. food um, Arabic based, or what, what, from what country? Well, we call it French Mediterranean, so we're able to do anything around the Mediterranean. Um, it smells great. Yeah. So what about the nutmeg? Um, yeah, I just oh, that's it. grated oh, that's it in oh, fresh. Well, we, yeah, exactly. We grated some for yeah, you. Okay. It was already grated, but and you want to cook this out until the garlic becomes soft, about two to three minutes, bring out the flavor a little bit, and then from there, you want to add. The squash, which has been, or I'm sorry, the pumpkin, which has been roasted, add that right into the pot. And you can do this. You want to stir it? Yeah, sure. Thanks. And we're going to scrape all that into the pot here. And you've made a chicken stock to go with yeah, this? Yes, so we made a chicken stock. You can also use a, a low sodium chicken broth, but I recommend homemade chicken stock. And we're going to add that right into here. So, did you make the stock? I did. Excellent. Yeah, it's very rich looking. Very rich. And this makes a nice, okay. so, large amount of soup. Right, exactly. From here, you just want to bring it up to a boil, which takes a few minutes. And from there, lower it down to a simmer. If you don't do that, it'll stick on the bottom. Right. It may burn on you, yeah. and you're going to run into some ruin problems. The soup. Exactly. Right. So when we come so. back, David's going to make this soup very special enough for your Thanksgiving table. We're back with David Bazarin, and we're making a most delicious pumpkin soup. And now, all the garnishes, is, yes. that's what makes it really special. What we're going to make next is a beautiful, cranberry fresh cranberry compote, which is about two cups of fresh cranberries, yeah. dumped into a small sa saucepan, a quarter cup of sugar, uh, about eight ounces of water. Cold water is fine. The zest of half a lemon. So it's nice to have lemon yeah. and cranberry, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's great. It really yeah. brings out the flavor. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. That goes in, and that just simmers for about a half an hour over low heat until it, most of the water has evaporated. We have some here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take care of it. So, okay. And they pop. They do pop. They yeah. break down a little bit and uh, release their flavor, and the sugar helps balance the So you're going to garnish so. with cranberry? Cranberry, and, and then some freshly roasted chestnuts, which mm, we have... My favorite of all. ...lightly scored, and then... They are roasted in a 400 degree oven. But did the kitchen like tell this. you how we do it? They we did. freeze it? Martha's uh, kitchen gave me a great technique where after you score them, you freeze them for about 10 minutes. And that the steam helps release the shell. And this is what you end up with here. So you freeze them, then you roast them. Exactly. Yeah, and then the, exactly. the shell just and falls the shell apart. Just right off. It's yeah. Excellent. So, do you, any of you know that? Yeah, it's great. And because look what you get, Wait. the perfect peeled Beautiful. chestnut instead of it all broken up, you know? Excellent. So excellent. it really works. So then slice these, right? There's something for the... new every day. These are sliced really thin mm. and then placed into a saute pan over medium heat and sauteed in butter until lightly browned. I like that, that David here. uses a lot of butter. Yeah, I love butter. I like it's cooking so with good. butter too. More butter do you use than uh, olive oil? Um, there's a balance. It depends. You know, I mm. the chef for three restaurants. Um, it varies. Uh, at Baraka, I use a little more butter because we go all around the Mediterranean versus the other two restaurants, La Suite and Shape of Pop. And Pas. what's La Suite? La Suite is a brasserie in the Embarcadero, which uh -huh. I just took over and just changed the menu actually Tuesday. Great. And, then, uh, well, and so that's Eastern here. kind of food? It's more brasserie, uh, upscale brasserie, huge um, oyster, oysters on the half shell, cassoulet, steak free, stuff like All that. All my favorite yeah, nice. things. And he right. ate at uh, DV Bistro last night. I asked him where he ate. And where are you eating tonight? 
Uh, I have to leave, actually. I have oh, to go no. right back. I oh, have no. so much to do back in San Francisco. So, you cook, these, so busy. you cook these slowly until yes. they turn to slowly, this the, there's a lot of There's a high uh, natural sugar content in chestnuts. So Look at brings, the beautiful little nice chestnut chip we have here. Yeah. So that's pretty for the, for the soup. Okay. okay. So we're going to... Uh, up a soup here. Now, did you puree the soup? The soup has been pureed. Or do you put it through a I chinois? like to use a blender and it's uh, strained twice through oh, a chinois. Okay. It, to give it a nice, nice Silk. texture, nice and silky, nice mouthfeel. So, mm, the recipe I, I have here is Look how nice and about, thick it has gotten, so but eight. not too thick. So, I can't stand it when it's like eating a too puree. Yeah, yeah, it's too much like yeah. a paste. So, so I'll, I'll grab spoon the, uh, out for you. Here. Mm. And um, before that, oh, the heavy cream. The, um, one of the most well, I'll have it without here. cream. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's for me. Cream is optional. Okay. Okay. We'll just whisk that in right at the end. You don't want to cook it anymore here. The I can see it's going to taste even better with the heavy cream. It lightens, it lightens does. the color up, gives it more richness, and oh, yeah. really, 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 it's a nice okay, finish. Okay, I think on I'm going to make this soup for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so that another. That goes right in the center. Mm -hmm. So about. There you go, it's nice. A little bit of a really bright, nice, nice fresh cranberry goes in the center. Look at the color. And then the last but not least is the beautiful crispy chestnuts that go around. Give it a nice texture. You have the balance so, of the sweet soup. Someone just asked, how can they incorporate cranberries into their Thanksgiving dinner? Well, here's an unusual way to do it. So you have crunchy, you have tart and sweet, and exactly. you have silky smooth. Balance, texture, it's fabulous, very everything. Important. Well, David, thank you very much. Uh, this thank is you. delicious. Good luck with all your restaurants. Well, our next guest, award-winning chef, cookbook author, and restaurateur Rick Bayless of Chicago's Frontera Grill and Topola Bombo. I love the, I love your restaurant so, so much. much. And I love going there. And every time I go to Chicago, which isn't enough, <laughs> but I love it. And we always drop in and have a you drink. Do. Thank you very or much. A cock or a, well, a cocktail or um, hors d'oeuvres or yes. dinner or all. All of it. Yeah. So, um, we try to get you some good food. <laughs> so that we uh, want to cook something that's going to just say the goodbye to fall. And that is a wonderful, wonderful pumpkin with pork. Now, what kind of pumpkin is this? Well, we're going to use some pie pumpkins. You yeah. know, in Mexico, they have these really large pumpkins that um, well, we are kind too. of greenish on the outside, yeah. um, sort What's of tan called? and green. They call them calabaza. Calabaza. There, yeah. And they look a little bit like this is Not a cheese kielbasa. pumpkin. Calabasa, yeah. <laughs> not kielbasa. In That's Chicago, a, you know, there's we plenty love of Polish kielbasa, people. <laughs> exactly. But these calabasas are really huge. Now, they have a sort of light and loose texture. I actually prefer the flavor of a pie pumpkin because, because it's, it's a little sweeter and, and more denser. Right? denser. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I like to do that. So that's the pumpkin that we're going to use to make this braised dish. Now, they don't cook a lot with pumpkin in Mexico, oddly enough, in spite of the fact that it's they, the homeland but they do, for it. But they do cook with squash. They do cook with yeah. all different kinds of squash. And so I'm going to combine this pumpkin with uh, a smoky roasted tomatillo chipotle sauce and braise it with a little bit of pork in it. So and the recipe is delicious. in your, well, this is one of your earlier books. This is one of the earlier books. It's 10 years old Rick now. Rick Bayless's Mexican Kitchen. If you right. have this book, you can get the recipe out of the book. Otherwise, you can go to MarthaStewart.com and get this recipe. So don't bother writing it down. It's it's on the web. And I just want to point out that this is your latest book. <laughs> it's the latest I, I love this book. I use this it's book. It's so easy and approachable it because yep. it's what I cook at home. Mexican every day. Yeah. So uh, We're going to start by this roasted tomatillo okay. chipotle sauce. Now, what we've got here is the tomatillo mm. Tomatillos, this is my easy way Fragrant. of doing this, is to cut the tomatillos in half and just put them in a non-stick skillet over about Would you tell everybody medium. what a tomatillo is? Because, well, you know, a lot of people still don't realize okay. what it is. If it weren't cut in half, it's a round green thing covered in paper. It looks like a little tiny green tomato. Right. And it has a husk on the outside right. of it, so you have to take that papery husk off. I cut them in half and then put them in here with three cloves of garlic. And it takes about Here's three or four garlic. minutes per side, and we're roasting everything. Now, on the other side of that, mm. that is chipotle chilies. And if you want to put those over into this um, everything? this bowl here, all just the chipotle oh, okay. chilies. Now, that's a smoke-dried jalapeno. And we're toasting it to even bring out that smoke. So quality they dry it, it over a smoky fire? They do. And okay. that's exactly what, what you've got there is this smoke dried jalapeno. And these are just cooking um, They're just over cooking a low right there. flame. Now okay. we're going to rehydrate these. And if you don't want to go to all the trouble of working with the dried chilies, then you can buy the canned chipotles, oh, which I is see. what we right. have right over there. Okay. 
Oh, so this is uh, now San those Marcos. are the, okay. the those are the dried ones. They've been rehydrated in a kind of tomatoey, vinegary broth there. So you all just open them up and put the t uh, the tomatillos right in here. Now after. These guys have rehydrated in that hot water, just hot tap water, okay. for just a few oh, minutes. Oh, they change in size. Oh, let me, just show, let me just show the difference in size. They're going to look yeah, more like look. a red a red jalapeno. Oh, I see. And just put those right so in now, there. So now, why did they turn red? Are they... They're they're allowed to ripe and ripe oh, on the okay. chili plant. Okay. Okay. And then so, we're going to so turn So this that will on. get much, much bigger rehydrated. Yes, and much lighter in its color. Okay, so we're going to just make a puree out of that. And we're going to save this guy okay, for save that. over okay. here. Do you yeah. use that water? You know, I don't because it's a little bit bitter. Okay. So I don't like that flavor, and so I leave it out. Some cooks in Mexico do like to use it. Okay. So that's our base flavoring, but we're going to add to it some roasted tomato as well. Yum. Now, these are roasted tomatoes that have been done under a broiler. Sometimes I'll use my little toaster oven and just about five could or you six do minutes them, per Could you side. do them on a grill over the fire, too? You can, absolutely. Yeah. But what you won't get is the collection of the juices uh. around the bottom, which are really sweet and lovely. A really nice thing for people that are looking for shortcuts is the candy. And fire oh. roasted tomatoes. Okay, that are so over here's there. yet another um, shortcut. Exactly. Okay, Muir Glen organic yes. fine roasted whole tomatoes. So see, you can really get these now. And I think I think this is due to you. I think so because I, I so. love roasted tomatoes so much. And, I've been and, going uh, around and, and preaching. And manufacturers that. are paying attention to what the chefs are doing and making it easier for the chefs. But that is a very good product. It's I've a, used that. It's very good, and it's got the sweetness that you'll get out this of a roasted smells tomato. So good. Now, can't you get that sort of tanginess of oh. the tomatillos coming yes. up, as well as the smokiness of the yes. chipotle chilies? So you chilies? don't mind a little bit of the of the skin in here. I want a little bit of it because okay. I want a little of that smokiness and sweetness that you'll get from that charred okay. skin there. And we're just scooping all of that mixture right that up into in there. No, we're no. actually going to add that to the finished so have, dish. So you have a little I, stuff. And, okay. and I've got, I've got a wanna, lot of stuff, you actually. That? that would be great. I'll Thank you very much. You. I know the idiosyncrasies of the counter. Yes. There, oh, okay. yes, you do know the idiosyncrasies I do. See, I can get under it. there a little tiny bit. If you okay. saw what's going on back here. <laughs> Nothing. It's really nice because I know, but if he had done that, it might have gone all over the floor. You know, I probably would have gone oh, all over so the floor. Oh, you're so neat. Now, I'm okay. going to cut up a piece of pork. This can be a piece of pork shoulder. And what we're looking for here is just small cubes, about three quarters of an inch or so. And the piece of pork should be a pork piece of pork that you would braise. So probably you don't want to use a pork tenderloin for this. So you don't mind having a little fat in it? No, because it's going to cook for a long time okay. with our pumpkin. And while it's cooking there, actually, that's going to be pretty much the fat that's going to enrich this very lean pumpkin dish with the, uh, the you chipotle salsa. The restaurant? You know, we have done it as a side dish. And then and the other way that we have done it that I really love is in a small earthenware dish for people to make soft tacos out oh, of. See, I love that stuff. I love all those things at your restaurant. Well, wait till you, you taste you this. Get a, you get a nice little basket of the wonderful tortillas. That's right. Just and fresh then, made yeah, ones. Yeah, fresh made tortillas. Uh, and they're soft and and uh, flexible, and then you just spoon these wonderful toppings. I and actually roll them think up. I, I hear a stomach's growling out there <laughs> as you're discussing. Everybody that. is. Okay, so now. Okay, into this skillet here, we're going to drizzle a little bit of oil. We've got the pan already hot, so we're okay. going to put in a little bit of onion, and if you want to scoop that um, the pork? pork in there. Okay. And we're going to let this cook. For um, now you five, talked six about these minutes. juices. Should oh, we use I those? Did, yes, because oh. I didn't, didn't do it. Okay. Let's put that no. over there because okay. I don't want that part no, of it. Okay, but those so can get scraped right, right into in there. there. And uh, we're going to let the pork cook. And when we come back, Rick's going to finish off our smoky braised Mexican pumpkin dish. And you're actually going to see the pumpkin, right? <laughs> I'm back with this wonderful chef, Rick Bayless, from Chicago. And we're about to assemble our smoky braised Mexican pumpkin and pork dish. So next step, okay, oh, that, oh well, so show that. This, oh. Yeah, because this is what it should look like. It's very brown. The onions and the, and the pork are very brown. And it's all of that browning that's going to create mm. such beautiful sweetness to go with this pumpkin. Now, we, the next step, of course, is to work with this pumpkin. This so, it's a very, pumpkin. so it's a very thin pumpkin. I and like that's, that. And that is pretty much what you'll get out of the pie pumpkins. And then we're going to cut that up into about three quarters quarter inch pieces or okay. so. This is a really rustic dish. And all of those pieces then we're going to put into so is that enough? Do I have to do this one? No, I'm going to do half of that okay. one, I okay. think. Okay, let me just get one right more little of, strip off here. Right amount there. Okay, there. Perfect. Okay, so then I love this Santoku knife. Yeah, it's great shape. It's, uh, it's a good shape for 
getting in there and doing all kinds of tasks, multi-purpose. So, so chunks that, of pumpkin, like about yes. a three quarters of an inch chunks. Yes, okay. exactly. Now, I'm now my favorite, to, Swiss chard. Swiss chard. I mean, pumpkin, Swiss chard, very high in and niacin and, and vitamin C. It's super and, healthy and, and super this, flavorful. Oh. So I'm going to ask you to scrape that over okay. into... Now, we didn't add any water this. to this. No, I'm going to do that okay. over here. I'm going to put our roasted tomatoes that have been cut up. Do you know into, the secret about keeping this in, just use your finger underneath and stick your finger up in the hole there and, um, and, and hold it, hold it in, from, yeah. And then you can turn yeah. it around and it doesn't fall out into your dish. I'm putting just a little bit of water in here to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Now that smoky, tangy mm. chipotle salsa is yeah. going to mix with all of these other ingredients here. I'm gonna add that Swiss chard in there if you wanna pass that on over. You know, we'll Don't you kinda, love our little Mexican bowl? You know, those are really beautiful. They those are. look like they came from the sort of north central section of Mexico where they make that kind of shape. They're really wonderful to use as little soup bowls as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I love them. Now, once this is all kind of mixed up and that Swiss chard has moistened, because remember mm. that Swiss chard is going to cook down a lot as this goes into the oven, we're going to put this all on top of the pumpkin here. So this is a, a great casserole. It's a great Wouldn't, casserole, and it reheats really beautifully and as beautiful well. beautiful for a buffet, if you're going to be making a buffet. Now, you can use the Swiss mm. chard or not use it. If you don't want to put that spinach? in there. You could use spinach or you could leave it out. If you're going to reheat the dish, it's probably better not to use the Swiss chard in it. Okay, so once this is all put together like that, then I'm going to lay this piece of parchment over the top of yeah, it. Yeah, because you don't like metal to touch your food, do you? Like <laughs> no. That? no. I, foil is a kind of uh, an interesting thing, but I don't think it's, it improves the flavor of anything. It doesn't, but it's important for, for heating up, but... The, pay, the parchment really saves your life, I It think. absolutely yeah. does. This is a high acid dish because of those tomatillos. Right. So protecting it from the foil is a really essential part yep. of that, I think. And then you put it into the oven and let it bake for about 45 mm. minutes. After that, you should the pumpkin should be tender. Uncover it, put it back in for 10 or 15 minutes more, just to kind of give it a beautiful look on the top of it. Oh. And that's what it looks Where's like our when tortillas? it comes out. You know, I don't have any tortillas. Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness. I wish I could pull some out of my back pocket. I want but a little me, taste. I'm going to have to serve you some of this. Doesn't that look beautiful? So that could be a side dish. It could be a side dish. It could be a main, it could be course. A main course. Just some rice and some beans. Yes. A very simple rustic Oh, it's very dish. delicious. Oh, Saturday yeah, lunch. see that. Mm. Yes, this is a kind of dish that I think works really beautifully mm. for um, a little, a simple meal when you don't want to have anything that's too rich. And of course, during the holiday time, everybody thinks about those kinds of this things. This is really good. Mm. Well, thank you very much for sharing yet another oh, one pleasure. of your lovely, delicious dishes. We're here, we're back, and my friend Lorraine Brocco and I are going to make a delicious dish that would go with her new Brocco wines. Uh, and you can drink red wine or a white wine with this delicious pumpkin ravioli, which Absolutely, you love, right? which I adore. Okay, so you start with a okay, three pound... Okay, can I just tell you something? Because yes. you know I'm not really good in the kitchen. Right. I would have never thought to have got a small pumpkin to bake. I would have thought you had to take a big one. Hello? Oh. Well, this is the, there are a lot of these little sugar pumpkins around now. Sugar pumpkin? That's what it is, a very sweet, delicious, um, very um, nicely textured pumpkin, if we can get through it. Yeah, here we go. So now here, you can follow, take the seeds okay. out of that side. I could do so that. So to cook the pumpkin, very easy, um, just scoop out the seeds. Now I'm using my favorite pumpkin seed scooper. scooper. <laughs> and then oh. um, preheat your oven to uh, 350 degrees, and uh, you rub the pumpkin halves with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of brown sugar, and just bake them cut side down. It takes a while to get this scraped out, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is not easy. But we need to get here. Want to use the pumpkin scraper? No. No? No. Oh. Because you don't have one at home, so you would try to use a spoon, right? Well, I would start with a huge pumpkin. That would be well. my first mistake. <laughs> And can I, can Do you I have an oven big enough for a huge pumpkin? I, it never even occurred to me a small oh. pumpkin. Well, see, can I, can these I are just good. Tell, can I tell everybody when you came for lunch? Oh, yeah, tell. I, I said to everybody <laughs> one day, it was not this last summer, it was the summer before, and Martha has, of course, a house in the Hamptons, and so do I, and she, we, we spoke on the phone. I said, come, come for lunch, come for lunch. So the next morning, should I get that's rid good. of that or yeah, keep yeah, that okay. stuff? No, that's okay. All right. Yeah. So the next morning when I wake up, I said, oh, by the way, Martha's coming over for lunch. And everyone froze. <laughs> 
Well, you had a house full of people and delicious food. Delicious food. The Martha. Is your nice boyfriend still around? Yes. Oh, good. And he makes delicious grill. Oh my! Everything he made was delicious. That was fun. But I tell you, everybody froze. That goes in the oven. All when right. it comes out, it looks like this. That's okay? pretty. And you want it until it is easily pierced like that with a point of a knife. And then you scrape this out of the, out of the shell. That's And we've easy. already done it. And put it into a cheesecloth and let it sit there uh, in a strainer like this. So and then any, we squeeze it. Yeah, you can squeeze it or you can just let it sit there a little bit and a lot of moisture will drip we'll, out. There's a little moisture in the bowl. Okay. Okay. I'm supposed to squeeze. Oh, okay. that was well, you, my All job. right, you do that. And I will start adding the uh, rest of the stuff to the... Um, filling and this is the filling which is very flavorful and dry because you don't want it wet because it's gonna if it's wet it will um, leak out of the raviolis. Right. So one teaspoon of shallot. You. Yeah, you're doing a very good job. Um, I don't like a quarter job. of a cup of <laughs> grated locatelli cheese. You could also use a Parmesan cheese if you don't can't find locatelli. And then oh this is good too. Two tablespoons of ricotta cheese. I like to use whole milk ricotta, but you can use the skim variety. You look really great. Whoa, so this is like... Have you been um, doing a lot of running around, exercising, getting... No well, exercise. How do you like playing Eating, the... Eating, drinking. That's my exercise. <laughs> oh, here's the secret. Oh, by the way, Lorraine, look. These are amaretti. Do you know the little um, macaroons, the Italian macaroons? Crush them up and use three of those little amarettis or one big one and put that into your pumpkin. That I learned from a real Tuscan lady and it gives that flavor that's so unusual a pinch of salt, a pinch, pinch of, of pepper, pepper, and a little bit of grated nutmeg. Very important, too. I don't like that job. You don't like nutmeg? No, I just didn't oh, like here, my here. There's a, there's a, job. Oh, there's a towel there oh, for you. Oh, thank you. For your hands. Under the counter there, there's a... Oh, yeah. Okay. There. The nutmeg's important, too, and um, a lot of Italian food has nutmeg in it. So just pulse this up, and we will make... Beautiful, beautiful ravioli. So, uh, what's happening with the psychiatrist and Tony? Uh, it's S happening. S <laughs> oh, do you know what that means? We're back on the oh, air in no. March, yeah. which is exciting. Yes. Thank you. Well, I have well, that is a beautiful. You want a little taste? Yes. Uh, Can taste. I go? Yes. How's that? Mm. Good. Tasty? Can you taste the amaretti? Yes, I can yes. taste. I think that that's really everything. I think that that's really what's important about it. Here, we'll just move this over. Now you can buy sheets of pasta. Uh, I was going to show you how to make pasta, but we've already, you know, done that on the show so many times. So you have one s set of sheets, and I will have another. Now use your tablespoon, and we want to put uh, equal amounts, about a tablespoon. A full um, one. A full tablespoon, just... That makes sense. Yeah, just... I'm using my Space finger. easily. Yeah, make sure you leave space, space around. to yeah. do that. Oh, so that okay. you can put another sheet of pasta on top. Okay? So you're going to make six raviolis out of each she double sheet. Well, then what do we do? Put the other one on top? And yeah, that's, that's how right. You... Uh -huh. Okay, good. Now, I you, you could fold it over, too, but this makes Table. a prettier ravioli. And we want pretty, we want sort of uniform. Um, mm, these are so good. Mm. It has the perfect flavor. I love it, and I can't wait to eat this. Because so, I know. Can I tell you another secret? My sister-in-law is here. Oh, Jill, yes? And we call her the Martha Stewart wannabe every holiday. And how's she doing? She does good. That's why we oh, say good. we teach her. Well, you have a very lively family. You, you have, Lorraine has two of the most gorgeous daughters on earth. And how are they doing? They're good. Margo's, good. Are, Margo's here. She wanted to come see your dog, oh, but you didn't bring her Francesca. Oh I, didn't, oh, I did not bring Francesca with me today. This is just so water? Here. Yep, just water, which is your glue. Really? Yep. What and happened to, like, butter and... Well, that doesn't make the pasta stick. Water makes the ah. pasta stick together. And, uh, and so you press down like this. And then the secret that we learned from Scott Conan from Lampero. Have you eaten at Lampero? No. Restaurant in New York? Oh, mm -hmm. I have to go there with you one night. He'd love it if you came. Okay. Oh, he's taught me that once you make the ravioli, put the ravioli into the freezer and let them sit for a half an hour before you I cook them. I saw that show. Oh, you did? See, didn't it? <laughs> and didn't that make sense? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I'm not a big cook. But are you in? But you're interested. I'm interested. And I'm see, always interested in beautiful, everything. Beautiful, beautiful raviolis. So how are you doing?
Get those Go for it. into the freezer, and we're going to be right back with Lorraine to finish up our ravioli. Uh oh. How we doing? Well, we're just boiling the ravioli. You have to put them in a pot of. Uh, rapidly boiling water, and this does not look so rapidly boiling, but it does. And make sure you salt the water for the ravioli. We didn't put a lot of salt in the filling right. or in the pasta dough, right. so put a little bit of salt in the water is just do you fine. Do that? Do you do, when I boil pasta, I always put in a little salt, is that right? Always, yeah. Always. And not so okay. little. I mean, some of the chefs put in tons, tons? of salt in the okay. water, yeah. And always have at least um, a, a five quarts of water per pound of pasta. Don't yeah, forget I have that. that. I have that Yes, pot. good. So now we're using um, a half a cup uh, of butter. And this is unsalted butter. And just let that well, melt. That's because you've managed to put it all in there. And then into the <laughs> butter sage. Wonderful. I love this. I, now, would you consider yourself an ordinary American? Well, let's put it this way. I heard what you said before. Yeah. I still live in the same state. I am a mother of two. What else was there? I don't consider myself ordinary in anything, <laughs> but okay. I'll, you know, I still live in the same state. But I'm you see, what is ordinary? That's the big deal. You know right? what it is? Is it's it's a personality thing. I think you know the I'm putting ordinary. A, wait a minute, I'm putting a little balsamic vinegar into the sauce. Okay. Okay. So the butter is turning a little tiny bit brown, and that's what you want. Can you smell how good yes. it smells? And the sage smells really good. That's what you want. I think ordinary is a great base to life, and it depends on your personality and how you spice it up. I mean, look, when I go to Kmart and I buy all my Martha Stewart stuff. <laughs> And I she do. does, because I, do. I go to her house, and there it is I there. Do. But she's, she, she knows where to search for quality and, and not average and not... Um, and, but it depends on what you put on the white plate. Right, exactly. With and the here. little eggcorns around mm, them. And look what we're putting <laughs> on. Look, what, oh, do you have those? I do. Oh, good. I was now, hoping here's you recognized Here's our pumpkin you ravioli. They, they're floating. They're floating. We're just going to put those right into the butter and stir them around, and we have a lunch. This is enough for four people and, uh, and two hungry ladies. Now, is this season gonna be the last season? No, we're coming <laughs> back in March, and then we come back again in January 07. Wow, good, everybody wants it. So nice. here is nice. so easy. Here is such an easy and delectable, and this is a great uh, first course for Thanksgiving too. If you yes. if you have um, if you so wish, you know. Oh, and would you like to come up? Sure. We have enough for two members of the audience here. I'll... I was going to give you mine, but Martha said to taste. It. What's your name? What's your Laura. name? Laura. Laura. Yes. Oh and enjoy. God, Where are you wonderful. from? Upstate New York, Loudonville. Oh. Okay, mm. and you? Emily. Are you related? You were mother oh, and daughter. Oh, wow, how nice. <laughs> Can you tell? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, yes. a little okay. bit. Yeah, you look a little bit alike. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, so taste. Let me let me know what you think. <laughs> okay, this is Here really, go. really good. About. I love it. You do? Good. Yeah. So now you can make these large ravioli, you can make them smaller ravioli, you can make them into tortellini, uh, you can do all kinds of things, but this is that filling that you really uh, want this. to make again and again. Right.